It is 9 p.m. in Nairobi. On such a night, on July 2nd, 2016, Paul Midega sat down to watch the last game of his life. This was a semi-final cup between Italy and Germany. And this night is where the tragic story of Paul Midega begins. July uh, 2nd of uh, 2016 was an important day in uh, European football uh, when uh, the semi-finals of the European Cup were to be contested. When such a tournament gets to the semi-final stage, now that's the serious end of business because you can almost uh, smell the trophy. And so it's an evenly poised game. Uh, the semi-finals of the Euros evenly poised. Germany and Italy almost Nothing to separate these two, time, uh, two teams in terms of their history and culture of the game. The whole of Germany from Berlin to, to, to Munich is watching, just like the whole of Italy from Parma to Roma to Milan is watching this game. Somewhere in Nairobi, a young man, Paul Midega, was doing more than just watching this match. Midega had taken out a huge bet of 80,000 shillings on this game. I would understand his passion and excitement from this game. Uh, the fact that he can put in a stake of such an amount into this game shows that it's a high stake game, not only to the Germans and Italy, but also to this young man, Midega. The night were done. Oriama. Your person is your brother. He splits the bet, puts stakes on both teams because he wants at least to get something from it. Either way, he's looking at it as a win-win situation for him and it is a win-win situation because in this part of the world you don't get 80,000 shillings very easily. It's an equivalent of 800 US dollars. I can picture him watching the game in anticipation mode. At halftime at 0 0, he's losing his money. So I can imagine him not being even able to take a cup of tea or coffee, uh, just, just anticipating and, and waiting for the second half to start. And then Mesut Ozil gives him a lifeline with his money. And uh, at that point in time, it appears Germany could just uh, sneak away with this. I'm Kevin Gashe. Uh, I'm a consultant psychologist. The first phase is called the winning phase. So in this winning phase, um, the person is gambling for that fun and excitement, and they are winning here or there, and things like that, right? But then, Leonardo Bonucci has other ideas. And there aren't too many Germany complaints about it. And his world just comes crumbling down at that point in game, and it's 1-1. One, one. Then it's back to basics for him, it's back to square one for him. He has to ensure that one of these team does win. He can't do so much at home, he's done his side of the story, he's put in his bets. All he can do is cheer, him or is cheer on either team to win. So between the 78th minute and 90th minute should be the longest time of his life because, I mean, he's waiting, he's hoping for another penalty. Whenever there's a corner considered, he's anticipating, he's on his feet. But it doesn't happen. It all goes wrong in the last 12 minutes of the match, and it's the most uh, regrettable 12 minutes of his life. After the winning phase, now you have the losing phase. Now, in this losing phase, the uh, losses have accumulated. You're losing more than you're winning, right? Paul did miss out on one very important aspect of a football match, which is that the match can settle in a draw. Or probably didn't understand the rules of the game and thought that the penalties will count for a win. They don't count for the win as per the laws of the game. After this phase, after the losing phase, now we have the desperation phase.
Mimi naitwa Priska. Ujua ni Midega. Mimi ni Mama Paul. Hapa ndio ilikuwa nini yake. Hapo hapo ni kama imeteremuka juu ya mvua. Kwa hiyo boma alikuwa anatusaidia. Vitu sote tulikuwa tunategea Paul. Na alikuwa mtu mmoja hapa mwenye menda university ni yeye yetu. Yaani mwenye furaha jaraha, unajua raha. Mnapenda mnapenda watu hata watoto. Kama iko hapa, watoto na mengi hapo watoto nakuja. Juu alikuwa yule mtu yani akufuraha na watu. Anatamani tu kuona watu. Hata wakati alikuwa huko Nairobi, hakukuwa anakaa sana. Anarudi nyumbani anaona watu wa nyumbani. Every money Paul akikuwa na pesa alikuwa na. Yani the first thing is betting. Na confirm ame bet. Amepata kitu fulani. Jua na kata kuna siku tulikuwa na yeye hapa nyumbani. Akabeta ka pata kitu kama 10,000. Kuna siku fulani and think like that. Vijana ni vijana kama yeye na kaugo utaona. Ina bet tu. Si ndio? Mama waachana na mama. Mama anaongea na mna gani? Waachana na mama. Ni na bet. Sangine yeye anapata. Naona kama yeye anacheka. Yudo. Ah. Msitapata. Si ndio? It's also known as the hidden addiction because it's easier to conceal than other addictions. For example, with an alcohol addiction, uh, you, you can there are noticeable signs. There are those telltale signs. Maybe you can you can smell the alcohol on the person, or you can see the person is intoxicated frequently or more often than not. Yeah, but with gambling addiction, they are not they are not those noticeable telltale signs to that extent. Si kuingine pola likuwa hapa, anabeta sema mama libu, yako na pesa kwa mpesa. Mina sema hei, atapatie mimi silimi ya moja lafu ni beti kwa simi yangu hapa, ata wewe. Lafu wanafanya hivi, hivi, anabeta. Kamu nafiku siku kama satisa hivi. Natukia teng, 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 mina ngalia, oh Paul, nime pata. Elifu mwanya na miasita. Paul, mina pata. Na wewe, mina pata. Silinge lifutatu za hiyo. Hiyo ni ya mwisu. Hiyo pesa ni likuwa ya brother yangu. Hui nakuambia likuwa naishi na ye. Sasa unajua likuwa anapenda Paul sana. Wako karibu na ye. Yani anakodinyeti na ye. Wako karibu kabisa. Sasa aliona, maiburo brother yangu wakuna kitu anesa nifanya. Maybe nikimupa hii pesa, I think atatumia na hivyo suri. Lakini tunaesa sema ni kama unajua saitani pia inaesa tokea na njia ingine. Midega was in the money until Boateng handled the ball. Kima nini dago, usiepe ni aroduto, omiyo wapari sechete. Unaweka pesi mingi, alafu peta nakote. Kijana hili anapatia hii pesa, pesa mingi. Pereka ugu, alafu hii naenda kwa beti, nafikiri kama nitapata mingi sana, alafu narulisa hii pesa. Alafu pesa naenda yote, anaenda yote, anaenda yote. Sasa nafuanya nini? Na maybe, I think, kama alistuka tu hii pesa, imeisha already. Maybe alikuwa nataka pesa mingi. After the desperation phase, now you have the last phase, which is the hopelessness phase. A lot is crumbling down, and they're in almost crippling debt at that point, right? And that, at that point is where the suicidal thoughts and the suicidal attempts start to manifest, right? Because a lot looks like it's crumbling and for a lot of people, they feel like there's no other way to get out of that situation. Mi nasi katu kamba, nenda aku lala bayar misu, ni view tu. 
Gimani ni dago ya e, usipe ni ero duto, nunge wa parisani. Nafua mguo mpya. Naandika barua, mama usitoe hiyo nguo yangu. Nenda na nguo yangu hiyo. Usitoe hiyo nguo naweta naweka ingine. Alafu inakufa tu hivi. Barua, unasema mimi mama usilie, wacha tu niende. Usilie. Ona tu barua hii usilie. Yeye ameenda. Madio asione vibaya. Ni vile ametumia hiyo pesa ndio ameamua. Akaona ameharibu pesa. Sasa aliona aliamua tu kuvia kijua aliandika. Hiyo nakuja hiyo na picha anasema niweke kuwa. Picha kidogo hivi. Anaandika kwa barua. Nasema mama hiyo picha yangu. Reka alafu tengeneza hiyo picha. Ana hii picha yake. Kama nakuja tu pole pole nasema mama mi naenda na, nachukua pesa ya ndugu wangu mmenevete pesa amepotea sasa nitafanya nini saidia mimi maadhi hata mama anasikia anatoa hata ngombe yake mmoja hata mimi anatoa alafu anausa na pewa umenye pesa sasa yana kufa tu satan so with the betting world they are too clever for Paul in this case in point. And they know that the house is always going to win. Unfortunately, at the expense of Paul's life. But it does not end like this for everyone. How does it feel to win 208 million? Can you imagine it? What do you do first? No, 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 no. I got 208 million. Actually, not 208 alone. It's 208,765. When they play, you win. Gordon Paul Ogada was today unveiled as Sportpesa's biggest ever winner after scooping 230 million shillings in the mega jackpot. Sportpesa, made of winners. <laughs> It is every Kenyan's dream to win the Sport Pesa Mega Jackpot. Mid 36 year old Cosmos Korir. Not only did he dream about it, he played and made it happen. Hey, Cosmos. Vipi ba? Uko wapi? West Pokot. Una fine in West Pokot. I'm driving. Um uh, no, I'm um, after Kitala I blew the car charge and continue towards West Pokot. Sasa midway. I'm heading towards Kapenguria now. Yes. yes. So midway in the east, this story comes and uh, I, I almost caused an accident because, uh, you know, at the Gary, I see Kiki Vizuri, so I decided first to back and then. I think we talked about Pigia before. <laughs> yeah, 208 million, 733, 619 shillings. I sat on grass. Hata wenye wako hapo wondering, is it really true? Is it true? I told them I think it is true. I got 208 million. Actually, not to wait alone. It's 208,765,000 shillings. Yeah. That night, even food tasted, uh, you know, very salty. I didn't eat anything. Sleeping in my room was uh, one big hell. I didn't sleep, not even a week. You know, you can't believe it is you. So I gave them an account for, for them to put 208 million. 
So after I confirm the money is there, I said now, first things first, I went to, I have to get a good vehicle. So I went to purchase a vehicle. After jackpot money, this is the first item I bought. I got it at 12 million. Still serves me well. Cash money. Yeah, cash money. It has no loan, it has nothing. <laughs> 12 million, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when you are giving out, you don't feel so bad because you know there is enough yeah. that can be able. But I was always worried, what am I going to do with this money? So that it should never reach a point where I'm going to be down again. This is the house I was telling you, a two-roomed house. Yes. Yeah, this one. Right now, Saiza is at me, Miss Toh. I lived here for more than 10 years. Oh, no, no, this place. This place could talk up and back up. Oh, no, I can't go back up. Back up, I'm going to go back up. 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 Mak aja tu dijual, mak aja mian mana bapak. Betulnya lagi kita nak tambah tu sendiri ada end betul. Gua tambah tu sendiri ni, gua buruk sahaja. Ini lelaki. You see now the contractor there is, I've given him work and he's doing it for me. He's benefiting the whole place. This house was not complete and I wanted to complete it. So two million I had fired. I met a friend of mine called Joseph. He told me I have flats. I'm selling one of the flats in Ketengela. And I settled for that. Yeah, and it costed me 150 million. From the following month, I started earning. I was earning like 400 from that house alone. Ah, then I decided this looks like it is nice. If I can just another one, ah, this will be nice. So I went for another flat. For Two million. Uh, this one now had even bigger uh, space. It had one bedroom, 25 of them, and the others were bed sitters. Total of 96 rooms. Pitangela is great, let me yeah. tell you. So the other one gives 400, the other one gives around 500, 600, because it is a new building, so people are still entering time. So an average of 900 a month, it's not bad. I also bought some machines. I bought uh, an excavator and I bought two lorries. Oh, Baba. Hello. Come here, Baba. You got to me, Singa. You are Moon Angie. Bye bye. 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 Nah, baru je bicara ni tu. Kan, ni kan makasih banyak ni. If I was just staying home here, you would expect everybody to come and see you and tell you, give me this. You cannot finish all the issues that people have. So I had to be away somehow, so that I can be able to kind of guard myself, so that we can meet over the weekend. I come over the weekend. I look at my enterprises, but still my job, I I kept it up to up to now. Right at that time, I wanted to go down because the calls were just so much. Uh, it reached a point where I had to kind of switch off because there were so many requests, so many friends all of a sudden. See, dealing with that is not easy. It's, it's, it's something that is, how do you put it? Something that came when you weren't expecting. So I decided, let me, I fixed the money for some time. Um, I fixed for six months. I told them I'm not going to touch this money for this time. So, so after coming, I decided to relocate from uh, Bomet. And I had my friends that, had, that we were with at that time. And they wanted the top, the one that I told you. The top. Now we went to Karen after purchasing the vehicle. We went to Karen and uh, another problem again. Why are you giving these people money? 
So I told them, these are my friends. And uh, we were with when we were betting, and I agreed. <laughs> yeah, Eldoret is uh, the central town, eh? More or less like a city, eh? though it is not a city. But I think it will be one time the city of champions. We had a friend who was giving out a hotel on lease basis, not by. So this is the Nyaya. Yeah. Former president used to sleep here. This was his bedroom. I found it when it was painted red. Everything. Everything yeah. was red in this place. It was a Nyaya house. So here is the bathroom. I got this place in 2019. It was one of the side houses for my wife. My wife doesn't ask me anything. No. She does everything in her place. Fuels her own vehicle. She runs another entirely like another department. But I decided to buy my own, so I got myself a two-acre land now to put my hotel, although I have not done it in Eldoret. What happened, Fundi? Mommy, there? Oh. I'm building a man. Is it a mansion? Yeah, I think it's a mansion. Mm. It's a res residential building, eh? Yes, brother. <coughs> I have some plots somewhere. You want to see everything? I'm a... Welcome to the farm. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the land I'm still paying for. It's 15 acres. So welcome to the farm. It's now planting season, eh? Uh, though mine I did. Bomet County, I have two plots again. Uh, good enough, my dad is there today. Oh, okay. Yeah, come also. Uh, so I'm building in my house at home. Uh -huh. So they had, he had come for the tiles. <coughs> then uh, where we live, I put, I bought the apartment. Bought at 6.6 .6 million. <laughs> if it were not for Jackpot, I wouldn't be here. Maybe I will still be in Bomet. This is my wife's. So I have a wife called Joyce, and I have three kids. Well, my family, they've, they've gone through a lot with me. Every time they have to be around. It's a bit stressful for especially kids. They want to play around. Sometimes they want to see me full time. But they can't because uh, I'm a busy man. If I'm not in Lerit looking at my other businesses, maybe I'm in Bonnet, maybe I have a contract somewhere else. But I make time, at least every week. I have to be there for a day to see them. So maybe that's the bad side about this because uh, I've become so busy. If I'm not in Nairobi, maybe I've traveled to look at a project somewhere. Yeah, that is the only downside here. If you have to bet or put stakes, do it wisely and within your means. Don't gamble or don't bet on your school fees. You get it? Or money for your family. If, let not your family you know, sleep without food because you've used everything. No, that's not the case. Just clear the fastings first. Fastings first. For me, I rarely go beyond 500 shillings. Even now, even, even now, however much or what I get, I don't go beyond that. At around 7 p.m., a week before Christmas of 2015, Dick Wathika, a former mayor of Nairobi, drives to Phoenix Casino in Nairobi's Harlingham area. Wathika went to meet his fellow directors at Sportpesa for a very important meeting. But around 7 p.m., Dick Wathika collapses and dies. So what happened at Phoenix Casino? Dick Wangi Wathika was mayor of Nairobi between July 2004 and 2006. It was between me and Dick Wathika. Sometimes it collapses when you're talking to him. From the perspective of a sport person, I was the chairman till sometime October 
2019 when I resigned from the company as chairman. I, I, I believe in the ant philosophy. Yeah? You know the ant philosophy? The ant believes that winter will never last. Neither does summer. So during summer, it stores food for winter. During winter, it knows that winters will not last forever. There are good times that are coming. So I believe in that. Don't waste what you have. Rather, make use of what you can. And, uh, because money comes and goes. If you are not careful, you will lose it. Yeah. Well, um, I have employed almost I think around 30 people. Business has assisted me once. If it were not for business, I wouldn't be even building that house. Yeah. No. So I'm contributing to the economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>